Hi right, guys, first stick up of the day. Uh, last night, uh, my friend got to the airport and he, uh, found out his flight was cancelled. They had emailed him, but he didn't check his email. So I've had to come alone, which wasn't ideal. Wanted to share the experience, but we're here. We're outside the ground and uh, gonna try and get a ticket. And uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look around. Seems to be a big sports centre. Um, I don't know what's that. Hi guys, uh, this trip's going from bad to worse. Um, last night, as I said, my mate's flight was cancelled, so that left me. Jumped in a cab, didn't really get uh, the right address. I thought a picture of the ground would be enough with the name of the ground. Uh, the cab driver was ranting and raving to some of one of his mates on the on the, uh, on the the radio. Br brings me to the back of here. I walk all the way around. It's all shops. There's no one in sight. It's really eerie and soulless. I'm thinking something's not right. I walk in through the main entrance, I sign my name, uh, and I'm straight onto the pitch. But it don't look like there's a big football game happening, really, does it? Um, I've, maybe there's two stadiums and I'm in the wrong bloody one by the looks of it. Uh, I think I'm in maybe the national stadium that's used as a multi-sports complex. So uh, this is heart of football, this is raw. But uh, also with that, you get someone like me with no media training, no IT training, and very, very poor planning skills, looking like a complete twat. But, you know... I said I'll promise you a vid, you got a vid. I'm on a football stadium. I'm in a football stadium. I'm on the pitch. I'm on the bloody centre circle. Let's see if you can see that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, well. Um, as for the pitch itself, it's pretty crap. I've got a glass ankle, and if I played on this, this pitch, I think my ankle would last five minutes. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's not the best. Uh, it's not the best. Uh, Jesus Christ, it's been a while since I walked onto a pitch. Um, yeah, definitely. I've now got a decision to make. Can I make uh, find the other stadium, wherever it is, and get there on time? Probably not. I've got about half an hour till kickoff. Uh, I'm almost certain now I'm in the wrong stadium. Um, but here you go. I think this is the Shenzhen National Stadium. Uh, it's a learning curve. Poor planning. Silly me, but you get a video anyway. Cheers. Okay guys, we're here. Um, I actually went to a second wrong place in a taxi and I'm now in the game, uh, 15 minutes late, and just as I arrived, they scored. Everyone's looking at me because I'm speaking English, and it is absolutely buzzing. Uh, it's 1 0 to Shenzhen. Beijing are on the attack. So Shenzhen scored after 14 minutes, and what's happening is I'm right behind all the ultras, if you can call it that. Um, but that's where all the noise is, all where the banging of the drums, all the singing's going on. It's a really good atmosphere, um, considering it's only half full. But they're making a right old racket. So Shenzhen 1, Beijing 0 at the moment. Alright guys, 30 minutes in and they're going for a walk break. It's the first time I've seen that in the game, but I don't blame them. It is unbelievably humid here. Uh, Alright, and I've lost uh, Arthur Stone just getting here. Um, the standards, I think Beijing are the better team, even though they're losing. Um, lower championship, higher league one. Shenzhen, it's hard to say really, probably a I love a League 2 team standard. Um, they're organised, they're tactically in shape, but the pace is quite slow, but then that owes to the humidity as well. But the, the final ball from both sides, there's a lack of quality there. Um, but we'll see how it pans out. Maybe in the second half with tired legs, we'll see some more openings. Um, but Shenzhen can be happy, they're winning the game at the moment. John Mary just went on an amazing run, beat a couple of men, got brought down on the edge of the box. Uh, he looks a handful. Three times now he's caught the Beijing defence on the counter attack. He's a powerful boy. Uh, Cynically brought down there. Let's see what comes of it. Yet another counter attack disrupted by the brutal tackling of Beijing. Uh, I can't believe the rest are not getting his cards out. The crowd are doing it, that to be honest. The two boys up front are actually causing them a lot of problems. They don't have a lot of speed, but they're very, very strong. And um, the Beijing defence ain't dealing with it very well at the moment. They're just bringing them down all the time. 
I think the ref's been quite lenient. Half time, it's 1 0 to Shenzhen. Uh, when I first arrived, Beijing were on top, but from about 25 minutes in, Shenzhen have battered them. Uh, no cutting edge at the final third, but to be honest, uh, they've been the better team. Beijing have been quite brutal in the defending, the rest been very lax, let a lot go, which has been frustrating uh, the crowd. Um, sort of spoiler tactics. Uh, watching this game, you wouldn't know which team second from bottom and which team second from top. Um, there is a lack of quality, but um, there's been flashes from certain players. Uh, the Norwegian lad Selnas is playing for Shenzhen in the middle of the park. Um, he's done okay. He seems to have a following as well. He seems, there's a few Scandinavian looking fellas going um, Not a bad game, um, not a bad atmosphere either, uh, but very, very difficult to. Uh, get in and amongst it and interview people and find out what's what. Uh, it's, it's not really that kind of place. That, um, I mean, I don't see any English speaking around here. I could be wrong. But, uh, my work's cut out here. So, the half time entertainment is the supporters throwing a scarf attached to a teddy bear. And uh, I don't even see that. But yeah. A bit different, eh? Shenzhen 1, Beijing 1, start of the second half, a really soft goal, innocuous cross, unmarked, headed in at the far corner. Um, that's a poor goal to give away, 1-1, one, one, and uh, the whole ground's gone flat, and uh, very few away fans. I uh, haven't heard any Beijing fans, so you, uh, yeah, that's gone down like a lead balloon. And it's been disallowed. Still 1 0. Referee's seen uh, something there and uh, the ground's pumping again. We have an equaliser, that is 1-1. One, one. It was a 1-2, played on the edge of the box, tucked away. Um, that should change you now. the game at 1-0, uh, sorry they scored and made it 1-1, they took kick off, there was a substitution, then the game stopped, the referee consulted uh, the camera over there, and he's ruled the goal out, but there was like a two minute, uh, a two minute delay, but the goal hasn't stood, so that's two goals Beijing have had this allowed now. Right, the ball's in the net, and this time it's definitely a goal. Third time lucky for Beijing. Uh, cross down the bike, the bice, down the uh, right hand side. Uh, and an own goal, knocked in by a Shenzhen player. 1 1. After all that. Last 10 minutes and Beijing are camped in Shenzhen half, they're pushing for the winner. I can only see one team winning this, Shenzhen have put in a really good shift but they're hanging on. It's all... Well shooting like that they've got nothing to worry about but it's it's a lot of last minute blocks, desperate lunges. Goalkeepers had a good game for Shenzhen. But there's some tired legs out there and uh, Beijing do look a better team this half now. Uh, as you can see, well, Eight and a half minutes plus injury time. I think Shenzhen will take a point at this stage. John Mary's gone off. It looks like another substitution. Yeah, John Mary went off about five, six minutes ago and they scored just after that. And um, he had a good game. He holds the ball up really well. That's, I think, 
blistering pace, but he's a, he stands out at this level. But they kick lumps out of him throughout the whole game. Uh, so no wonder he didn't last 90 minutes. Let's see what happens here. First time I've been in at Beijing's half a while. Okay, so it's been a long day. Um, we've had missed flights, we've had wrong stadiums, uh, three taxi trips, uh, arrived late, but we got there, we saw the game, um, we tasted a real Chinese Super League experience, my first experience with a Chinese Super League match, and it finished Shenzhen 1, Beijing 1. Um, the, uh, not many negatives really. The game wasn't that memorable. I've seen obviously better games. I've seen worse, but uh, it was all about the, the match day experience. I suppose the running track isn't really my cup of tea, um, and the stadium was half full. So they're probably the, the, the negatives. But then there was lots of positives. The fans that were there created uh, a really good buzz, really good atmosphere. They didn't stop singing from from start to finish. Um, it was, a, you know, it was a decent game and uh, Shenzhen got a vital point as well. Um, I got to see firsthand the fan culture. Um, I learnt a few things. Um, there isn't really an away fan culture, or I didn't see that today. Um, so that would be something I would be wanting to find out more. Uh, Shenzhen is a new city, so therefore it's a new team. There, there isn't any historical roots uh, as yet. So it's a, it's a first generation of supporter which is something unique. Um, these fans are really making history now. Uh, Shenzhen, I, you know, I think they've only been around 15, 16 years, not long. They're, they're struggling in the Super League this year and um, it's, it's going to be a battle till the end, I think. But uh, the fans certainly gave it their all today, as did the players. Um, definitely the lad up front, John Murray, he's a player, held the ball up well and it was only when he went off injured that Shenzhen really started to fold a bit. They had no focal point and the ball just kept coming back. They were camped in their half. Um, so it was a very, very uh, tricky last 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I saw some good passages of play, probably a lack of cutting edge. Um, and this is why a lot of these players are in the Chinese Super League. Um, it does, for me though, it's, it's crystal clear anyone going to the Chinese Super League at, at the top of their profession in sort of their mid, late 20s, the peak years, um, yeah, it's, as we all know, it's, it's purely for money. Um, the standard's probably below the MLS, to be honest. Uh, and uh, apart from the away fan culture, um, I, you know, I did see a few Beijing fans. They mingled uh, with the Shenzhen fans. There is no culture of violence. There isn't really any historical rivalries. 
Uh, it's all quite good natured. I saw a very diverse range of ages. I saw a lot of women and children. Um, so it made for a carnival atmosphere. Um, and I'll go again, but I'd probably want to go with a group or, or definitely with some other people because I think it's a, you know it's a good experience to be shared. Um, and uh, and that's it. And after a long day watching, uh, getting to the ground and watching the ground, um, very very tired. The actual grounds not even in Shenzhen. It's 45, 50 kilometres from where I am. Um, so I've learnt I've learnt something there. But uh, it's been a long day, and after a long day watching a Chinese Super League game, it feels uh, it feels only right that we uh, we chill out with a, a nice a nice cold beer. Uh, there we go, nice Chinese cold beer, and that rounds the day off nicely. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Cheers.